Hi folks, uh, this is just a very short video to tell you a little bit about um, the game I've been making for Nintendo Labo. Um, I've had about a month now, I've had the Labo for about a month now, uh, and so this is my first proper attempt at uh, doing something with it. Um, it isn't just a, a toy con mod. Um, so the, the actual project itself is based on a book, let's turn it around and show you. Uh, it's based on a book called What the Ladybird Heard by Julia Donaldson. Um, and illustrated by um, Lydia Monks, so that's the the inspiration for the illustrations here. Um, and it's a, a book that my eighteen month daughter, eighteen month old daughter, really loves. So the idea was to create a game out of it. And the premise is very very simple. Um, so the book, basically, the book is about two thieves who come to steal um, the fine prize cow on a farm. Um, and the ladybird helps them make up a plan uh, in which the, the, uh, they, the animals have to make different noises in order to confuse the thieves and they end up falling in the duck pond at the end. So in my version in the game, um, the ladybird is trying to explain the plan to the animals, but the animals keep getting a bit confused. So the idea is that you have to explain the plan to the animals before the thieves manage to get to the cow in the cow shed over here. Uh, and that's pretty much all there is to it. So there are four buttons, um, each with little ladybirds on, each of them correspond with a confused animal at the front here. Um, and that's pretty much how it plays. So I'll just show you in action and I'll show you a little bit of how it works. Okay, so to start, I do need to program in a proper start button at the moment, but to start, we've just got the uh, right button on the left Joy-Con here. So you see everything goes, it's ready. And here we go. Starts off quite slowly. The idea is it will be something that, um, you know, kids can play. But actually, you know, I've built in a mode that if you want to start it a little bit faster, you can. You can press the, the button several times and it speeds it up straight away. But it will get a lot quicker um, as you go through the levels. So as you can see, the, the um, correct presses result in your, your question mark scale going up here. And you can see it's starting to speed up now a little bit. As everything gets into play. Um, so obviously there's 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 a random element which I'll tell you about a little bit later. So we've got to the top of the scale and you can see that the um, the level has gone up and the thieves are starting to move along their track and you can see the speed is now starting to up. Oh, missed one. Occasionally you get a very quick one which is something that's a little bug I'm trying to work out at the moment. I haven't quite got on top of that one yet. Um, it's mainly to do with the way that the the switch um, works out the random number generation. Luckily, you get a life back. So these are my, oh, failed lives, it did it again. Oh no. Um, got a few little errors there, look. Right. So, um, I'll tell me a little bit about how it works. Um, so obviously the concept based on the book. Um, the construction itself took quite a while. Um, the, the main thing I wanted to get was the concept. So we started actually with some of the concept art for what the actual game board was going to look like uh, and how it actually play out in reality. Um, so that was that was most of the time actually taken doing that. Um, the next big thing uh, was programming the random appearance of the question mark blocks. Um, so that was actually quite tricky. So if we reset it, um, one of the big things that's th about the Switch is it doesn't have built-in uh, random number generator. So you actually have to do that yourself. Um, and I'll show you a little bit about how that works in a second. Um, so we actually have a look inside. Um, obviously, the, the lights behind the screens are fairly straightforward. The colours, uh, you see photographic gels. So these go in front of flashlights. Uh, and they give the, the quite nice colour behind. Um, so they're used to create different coloured flashes um, when you, in, in photography. Um, we've got buttons down here. So we'll just zoom into these a little bit for you. Uh, the buttons themselves. Um, these took a little bit of thinking through. So they use the IR stickers inside the box here um, to tell whether they're being pressed. There we go. So each of the buttons is on um, a stem like this. Um, and you'll see there's an elastic band that runs up the middle. So that when you press the button down, let's press that one, it stretches down but then returns to its normal position. Um, to make sure they go up and down in a straight line, I've used some little paper clips to make sure they don't stray too far from each other. And the IR stickers are obviously on here. Uh, that was the original position. This one worked a little bit better, so that's why they're down here. And then the IR camera comes in from the other side. Um, and then the only other real things in here to show you now are the programming. So other than the artwork, which obviously took a little while um, to put together, um, but actually not too bad. Um, and to be fair, the paper held up quite well, I thought, um, for having that on. 
I've got the instructions and a little bit of story on the side there as well. Um, the only other things really to show you are the programming. Um, so if we have a look at the programming, I'll take you through some of the, the trickier bits in the programming. Um, so if we go and zoom right out a second, it's quite a mess as you can see, tidiness is not my forte. Um, the main thing it's all based around is this over here, which is essentially a start button. Um, it's a very simple counter, it's an analog counter, uh, which when you press the start button, which is the right key in this case, makes this go to one. And as soon as that goes to one, it outputs to a selection of other counters. So there are effectively four blocks of counters here. If you can see this, there's a block there, there's a block here, there's a block further down and a block at right at the bottom. So there's four blocks. Um, so that original number feeds directly to two counters, both of which are set to prime numbers. So this one's seven and this one is 11. And as the analog um, is introduced, so that's on there, you can see they start counting up and as soon as they hit their prime, they reset themselves. Um, and you'll see that the number next to it starts counting up. So that's, a, that's basically a delay function. So these just count up to an arbitrary number, which is nine in this case. Um, so every time the prime finishes, it, it adds one to this. And effectively what that does is it means that uh, these two numbers are out of sync with each other. So when this number reaches nine, so this will count to seven, 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 that one eventually gets to nine. When that gets to nine, it will light up a light and you'll see a little light switch come on here. And that's basically the thing that lights up the question mark. Um, and that's your opportunity then to um, press the button. So uh, the idea of using prime numbers was to give this kind of random feel to it. So uh, the prime numbers uh, sync up. So it's, it's a kind of cycle of about 20 different variations, 20, 22 different variations. Uh, and these are basically just resets down at the bottom. Um, as soon as that lights on, we basically go into our um, button press mode. So, sorry, I won't zoom along. Um, so the deal over here so this first one says okay if the lights on and uh, it's been on for a set amount of time and that set amount of time is also linked to that universal counter down here um, then uh, if the button has been pressed and it's on then it's great and you should um, turn the light back off add a point to the score etc but um, if it hasn't been pressed by the end of the time cycle that it should be on for, then uh, dock a life. Uh, that's effectively what happens. So there's the score here. So that's score. Uh, and you see if we play this now, and um, we go into play mode, and there's the second button. So look, you can see a score point coming in here. Uh, this might take a little while. Let's just speed it up a second. Um, so there's another one. You can see the score point. If we miss this one, so we're missing this one down here, we get the, the error noise. And you can see the, the error lives lighting up here and we're straight to a game over because I sped it up quite fast, quite quickly. Um, and here is the thieves running along and there's the, the uh, trigger for the final end game moment and we can reset. It's got a universal reset. There's my three score bars. Here are the three lights um, you can see underneath um, for, uh, sorry, the four lights for the different question marks. And if we go right down here, you can see um, the four IR markers and their linked things. So that really is it. So the biggest challenge with this really when I was making it was um, how can I make it so that it seems to be random in the way the question marks appear um, and how can I build in a levelling system so that it gets faster and faster as you go through. So effectively what happens when you get to 10 on this score bar, it adds an extra one to your levelling system and then when your levelling system goes up one, it increases the number here and basically what that makes it do, if you watch the numbers here, when we're on one down here, these count up at a certain speed, but if I put that up to about five, you see they go up faster. So effectively what will happen is, whoop, that's far too fast. Um, so as that increases, it speeds these up and that creates the, the, the illusion of a, of a leveling system. You can see this is hopefully heading towards a winning scenario here. Should be it. And 
that's supposed to be the police arriving to take the thieves away, which is basically the end of the book. Um, and there we go. There it is.